So the first polynomial that I want us to ex expand and simplify is 8g minus 3 times 7 minus 3g. So remember, how do we do this? You circle the first term of the first bracket and you get it distributed into every term in the second bracket. So you're going to say 8g times 7, that would be 56g. Then you're going to say 8g times negative 3. Uh, 8 times negative 3 is negative 24. g times g is g squared. Then you would circle the second term of the first bracket and distribute that. Negative 3 times 7 is negative 21. And negative 3 times negative 3, that would give you positive 9g. This is your expanded form. From here, it wants you to simplify. So what we did is you have to group like terms. And we always wrote it in descending order of x. You will write it in descending order of g. So that means you're going to put the g squared first. So negative 24 g squared. Then you would put the g's together. So 56 plus 9. And then your minus 21. So that would be your expanded and then simplified. I want to go through some terms to see if you remember um, certain terms. Write down leading coefficient. Raise your hand if you remember what the lead or would know what the lead coefficient of this would be. Erin, what do you think? Negative 24. Once it's in descending order of x or descending order of g, the leading coefficient is what would lead the pack, right? What would the degree of this polynomial be? Ainsley? Uh, this guy right here. 2. Once it's in descending order, the degree is the highest power, which would be 2. Anybody remember what the constant, Jackson, what would it be? Negative 21. It's always going to be when it's in descending order, the number at the end with no variables. Um, what if you were asked this? The numerical coefficient of g. What would you say for this? What is the numerical coefficient of g? Tristan, what do you think? Sixty-five. Yep. You would find g, which is right there. Numerical coefficient would be the number in front. So it's sixty-five. That is a question uh, that they could make, turn this into a numerical response, right? Where you just put uh, push in a number. Yes. We'll talk about that after. Yeah, let's go through this first. Okay, if you understood that one, try number two. So this time, slightly more complex. It's a binomial multiplying a trinomial. But it's the same process. So this would be 2d minus 9 is your binomial. Your trinomial, 3d squared plus 10d minus 4.
So get that 2D circled, first term of the first bracket, and distribute it to each term in the second bracket. 2D times 3D squared would be 6D to the 3, because remember this is D to the 1. You add the exponents when you multiply. Then 2D times 10D would be 20D squared. And 2D times negative 4 would be negative 8D. Then circle the second term of the first bracket and get that distributed in. So you should be getting negative 27d squared minus 90d. And then at the end, you have a negative 9 times a negative 4. Two negatives will give you a positive 36. Collect your like terms and write it in descending order of d. Be careful with this, negative 8 minus 9D. That's how you type that in. And then the constant would be plus 36. The only other type of question I want to look at, we're not going to um, expand it completely. We'll just discuss it. You'll start it out. You could do it after. Can you write number 3 down? 2 times a binomial squared. What would you do if you had 2 times a binomial squared? Evan, what would you do? What do, what do you do with this squared? That's right. This squared applies to this bracket, this binomial, which says you write the binomial twice. You do not distribute, okay? So the binomial twice would be x minus 7 and x minus 7. You would bring down that 2. Where does the 2 go? The first bracket. Distribute it into the first bracket. And you would get 2x minus 14. And then your second bracket is that x minus 7. From here, circle the first term of the first bracket and use your distributive property. Actually, maybe we will finish it. Uh, 2x squared minus 14x. minus 14x again. Minus 98, no, plus 98. A common mistake that students will do is they will see this and they think it cancels, right? The only way that that would cancel is if this would, was a plus. Negative 14 plus 14, that would cancel. It does not cancel, though. Xavier, what's negative 14 minus 14? It's a negative 28. So just watch for something like that. That is expanding and simplifying. Let's now go to factoring. So remember the first half of this unit was expanding and simplifying, and then the second half was factoring. Write down the four different types of factoring. These are the only four you need to know. GCF, P, 
PSA number one, which was inspection. PSA number two, which was decomposition. And then difference of squares. Two terms separated by a minus. Each of those terms can be square rooted. Okay, let's start with the first method of factoring, factoring by a GCF. So write down negative 25 a squared b to the 8 plus 30 a to the 4 b to the 6. That would be factoring by GCF, and you first need to figure out what the GCF of this is. Who wants to raise their hand and tell me what the GCF is? What would the GCF of negative 25 and 30, would you take out two A's or four A's, and how many B's would you take out? Anybody have the GCF? Ainsley, what would you have? Yes. The only thing is, by convention, we start with a negative, G factor out a negative. So factor out a negative 5a squared b to the 6. So we've got two terms. We're going to divide each term by that GCF. Remember for variables, it's the variable with the lowest power. So between 2, a to the 2, a to the 4, you're going to take out a to the 2. Between b to the 8, b to the 6, it's b to the 6. Whatever your GCF is, that goes in front of a bracket, and your answer goes in the bracket. So negative 25 divided by negative 5 is 5. The a's would cancel, and this would be quotient law which is you subtract the exponents. So 8 minus 6 would be b squared. Over here, a positive divided by a negative would give you a negative 6. The b's would cancel, and you'd subtract 4 minus 2 to give you a squared. How they could turn something like this into a multiple choice, or no, a numerical response question, is they could say something like this. Um, the GCF will be in the form negative n a to the x b to the y. Right? So they'll actually tell you what exactly what your GCF is going to look like, and sure enough, it does. And then how they would turn this into a multiple choice question is they could say, what is the value of x? So what would that be? 2. What is the value of y? 6. It might be, what is the value of x plus y? So 2 plus 6 would be 8. What about this? What is the value of n? It's not negative 5 because the negative is here already. It is 5. In this case, n would be equal to 5 to match it up with that form there. Okay, let's look at PSA 1, PSA 2, which was inspection and decomposition. Let's do number 2 first. So x squared plus 9x minus 36. Three terms is always going to be a PSA 1 or PSA 2 question. PSA 1 is because it has starts with a 1. So you're looking for what gives you the product of negative 36 and the sum of 9. It 
it's the negative 36 that you're going to find everything that multiplies to negative 36. So remember, you could write 1 in 36. You divide 36 by 2, 36 by 3. So 36 divided by 2 would be 2 and 18. That's going to come nowhere near 9. Thirty-six divided by three would be three and twelve. In order to get a negative thirty-six, when you multiply these two numbers, in order to get a negative, that means one of these has to be negative. So it's either negative three and twelve, or three and negative twelve, and we are going to figure out which one sums to nine. That guy would give you the 9. This guy would give you negative 9. So my answer is going to be negative 3 and 12. That's my answer. Those are the two numbers that multiply to negative 36. And you, when you add them together, they add to 9. PSA 1, to factor it, was nice and simple. You just set up two brackets. Those are going to be your factors. You put an x at the beginning of each bracket, and then you simply put your answer. 1x is going to get a minus 3, and 1x is going to get a plus 12. And that would be your factored answer. You could check that by re-expanding it, right? Circling that x, distributing it in. Circling the negative 3, distributing it in. Write down this one. 2x squared minus 5x minus 12. Before you say it's a PSA 2, what should you always do? Yes, yeah, see if you could turn this into um, a PSA 1, right? Because then that factoring is easier. So see if you could get rid of that 2, but I cannot. Which number is going to give me the issue? The 5. So you say, okay, there's no GCF here. This is going to be a PSA 2 question. So you're going to set up the same chart, product sum answer, except now the product is, it's always your A times your C, so it's 2 times negative 12, which would be negative 24. The sum is still going to be the middle term, so that's negative 5. And then we're going to look at that negative 24. And we're going to say, what are the two numbers that multiply to negative 24 but sum to negative 5? So 1 and 24, 2 and 12. What else? 3 and 8. Again, in order to get a negative here, one of those must be negative. When you add them together, say which one sums to negative 5, and it would be the 3 and the negative 8. So that's your answer. PSA 2, it is decomposition. So you always say, after you figure out what the two numbers are, you say to yourself, what am I decomposing? You will always de be decomposing that middle term. So how do you get negative 5x's based off your answer? Well, 3x minus 8x, except some of you want to be strategic. What number would you write first that you want next to the 2? The negative 8, yes. It will work either way, but we're going to set it up like this. Bring down that negative 12. Bring down that 2x squared. Remember for decomp. You always get four terms, you always split them in half, and you group factor. Ask yourself, what can you take out from a 2x squared and an 8x? And that would be a 2x. So factor out the 2x and put your answer in the bracket once it's factored out. And you would have x squared divided by x would just be x minus, the x's would cancel, 8 divided by 2 is 4. Go to your last two terms and say, what can I bring factor out from a 3x and a negative 12? It's a 3. 
This is where you have to tell me the sign, though. It's a plus 3. Then do your division. 3x divided by x by 3, sorry, is x minus 4. Remember for PSA 2, these two brackets will 100% of the time be the same if you've done it correctly. So factor out that x minus 4. And then what's remaining is your second factor. 2x plus 3. And again, if you wanted to, you re-expand, simplify, and you'll get back to this original, is what you could do. Okay, just to see how you are with PSA 2, do this one. Nine y squared minus twelve y plus four. And I want you to take a minute to see if you could what you'd get for the answer, because then hopefully you notice something. Raise your hand when you get the two numbers, and I just want to see how many people click up four. So your answer is negative 6 and negative 6. Because negative 6 times negative 6 gives 36. Negative 6 plus negative 6 will give you negative 12. Do you remember what this is going to be called? It's going to be called a perfect square. Whenever you get the answer that's the same number, it will be a perfect square. So we do the same thing, though. Decompose that negative 12. Ask yourself, how do you get negative 12y using this answer? Minus 6y minus 6y. Bring down your plus 4. Bring down your 9y squared. Split and group factor. I like this one because there's a, you're factoring out a negative here, and some students will forget that. What you could factor out from a 9y squared and a 6y is a 3y. And that would give you... 3y minus 6 divided by 3 is 2. So you'd go to this side, and you'd say, okay, I could take out a 2. It would have to be a negative 2. So negative 2 comes out. Negative 6 divided by negative 2 is 3y minus 4 divided by 2 is 2. Your two brackets are the same, so you factor out that bracket. And then what's remaining is your second factor. How could you rewrite this? What would you say, Nicole? Squared, yep. We've got two binomials that are identical. 3y minus 2, close your bracket and square it. Before I do that difference of squares, um, write this one for number 5. We'll just do a super simple one for number 5. x squared 
minus 49. Difference of squares, remember, is two terms separated by a minus. Each term can be square rooted. So how you'd factor this is you would set up your two brackets and you'd say, what is the square root of x squared? It is x. What is the square root of 49? 7. What must the two signs be for it to be a difference of squares? That's right, a plus and a minus. So that is how you would factor a difference of squares. How they could make this more complex would be giving you something like this one. So write this as number six. 3z squared minus 75, you would say, okay, it's going to be a difference of squares, two terms separated by a minus. The issue that you'll run into is you can't square root 3, you can't square root 75. You GCF it first. So to get rid of that, 3. Not get rid of it, sorry, factor it out. And you would get z squared minus 25. Then this bracket is a difference of squares. Factor that by a, a difference of squares. Don't forget your 3. Square root of z squared is z. Square root of 25 is 5. One gets a plus, one gets a minus. There would be three factors for that question. So other than the shape, which we'll do, that's essentially polynomials. Expanding, simplifying, and factoring. That was the main um, concept from that. Let's do the shape now. So I'll give you the exact shape that you did on your unit exam. So this is what it looked like. And remember, very few students got this shape right. So we'll go through it and figure out what you would do. Here's what it looked like. This side was 5x plus 2. This was x plus 3 x minus 6, and then you were given this side, which is 2x plus 1. If I said, calculate this side first, this bottom, who knows how you would do it? Like, what two sides would you use and what would you subtract? So this one down here. Jackson, what would you do? Yes, it's this minus this. Here's the thing, though. When you subtract, you must subtract the ball that uh, the binomial that you're subtracting has to go in a bracket. So here's what it should be. This side here, it's exactly what he said. It would be 5x plus 2, right? It would be that. Minus. This must go into a bracket. Because you're subtracting both of these terms. That would give you a negative 1. Distribute in your negative 1, and then gather your like terms together. So put your x's together and your constants together. And you get 4x plus 8. So the length of this side, 4x plus 8. So I'm just going to write that here. Okay, now we need to figure out this. Which two sides would you subtract in order to get this side? 2x plus 1. Minus what? X plus 3. This X plus 3 has to be in a bracket because that's what you're subtracting. So it would be 2X plus 1 
to this side here, minus this side. Because remember, you're subtracting each term from the other side. That's really a minus 1, and you distribute that in. Gather your like terms. And you get 1x minus 2. So this side here is 1x minus 2. You haven't done a perimeter question yet. On, the, on your exam, it was an area question. If this question, if I change it to a perimeter question, how would you figure out the perimeter of this shape? You add all the sides together. So remember that perimeter, so we're just going to do this. Imagine a little person starting there, and that person has to go the entire distance of your shape, so you add up each side together. So if we were calculating the perimeter of this, so let's actually calculate the perimeter to make sure you'd be good, it would be this, plus this, plus this. When, you have an, when you're adding, you don't need to do brackets. So it would be 5x plus 2, plus x plus 3, plus x minus 6, plus 1x minus 2, plus 4x plus 8 plus this last one, 2x plus 1. So it just helps be really organized. All of that is going to reduce to two terms. Get all your x's put together, get all your constants together. So say to yourself, 5x and 1x, that's 6x, here's another x, 7x, so let's see, 5, 6, 7, 8, that would give me 12, are you getting 14? Okay, 14 x's. Let's figure out what our constant is. So I've got a 2 and a 3 to give me 5. Minus 6 would give me negative 1. Minus 2, so negative 1 minus 2 would give me negative 3. Plus 8 would give me 5. And 1 would give me 6. That is the perimeter. And then it would be units, whatever the units are. Remember, not units squared, because squared is for area. But this is what the perimeter would be. Do you know how you could do a check? How could you do a check that you were right? You'd pick a number. A really good number to pick is 1, right? So how you could check, or to verify, is you could say, let x equal 1. If I take this out and I put in a 1, what would the perimeter of my shape be? What's 14 times 1 plus 6? Yep, which is 20. The perimeter, you guys, would be 20 units. What you would then do is you'd go and you'd put in a 1 everywhere here. And it's not going to change anything, right? Because 5 times 1 is 5. This would become a 1. So this would be, like, this length here would be 5 plus 2. That would be 7. So let's see if we're going to get a 20. This, if I put a 1 here, 1 plus 3 is 4. This guy, 1 minus 6 would be negative 5. What would this be? 1 minus 2 would be negative 1. 4 plus 8 would be 12. 
and this would be 3. And now let's check. 7 plus 4 is 11. What's 11 minus 5? 6. 6 minus 1? 5 plus 12, and then plus 3. What are you getting? 20. That's how you could verify. Okay, so that's perimeter. You, you know what area is, right, you guys? My shape looks like a giant mess. But area, you'd be dividing this into two rectangles and finding the area of each rectangle and adding them together. That's how you do area. I want to do one last question, and then I will hand back your exams. Write this down. What is the length and width of the rectangle if that's the area? It should be um, x squared plus 7x minus 44. So the area of this entire rectangle would be that, it should say units squared. And they want the length and the width. What would you do? If I give you a trinomial, what could you do? Yes. We actually will do something like that after to double check. If you're given a trinomial, factor it, right? So factor this guy. This would be a PSA 1 question. Product of negative 44, sum of 7. This is how you're going to figure using a number though is how you're going to figure out the length or width. Yeah. So what are the two numbers that multiply to negative 44 and sum to 7? Okay, so Ainsley said 4 and 11, and it would have to be a negative 4. So it would be x minus 4 and x plus 11. What you would do to figure out which one of these is the length, which is the width, is you would pick a number again. For example, 5. Okay, so imagine, like, pick a number, say it's 5. 5 minus 4 would give you 1. This would give you 16. Which one should the length be? This one. The length is always the longer one. So that would be my length. So the length is equal to x plus 11. And I'm going to put that up here. x plus 11. This would be the width. x minus 4. So that's the length of your rectangle, that's the width, and the reason is, if I said what's the area, you'd say, well, area is equal to length times width, you would multiply these two together, and you would get back to this trinomial, is what would happen.